going on guys? So we are here at the North America International Auto Show, the Detroit Auto Show. And we are at the Cunningham Lingenfelter booth. So this is a lot of Lingenfelter equipped vehicles, but this specific vehicle we're looking at today is gonna to be the 60th anniversary Cunningham Corvette. You see they have a little banner here which shows the first one at Le Mans, and then this is the one that we are looking at right here. Very cool, and with me, I have a very special guest. So I have Tony, who's actually the CEO of Cunningham Motors. Tony, Hi, you want to hello, introduce hello, yourself? Uh, Tony Pierce with Cunningham Automotive. And um, what we have here is our, one of our 60 anniversary C8s that we're doing. Uh, they're numbered one, two, and three for our original race cars that we took to Le Mans in 1960. And uh, they're 600 horsepower, built up by Lingenfelter for us, who's our build partner. Uh, everything on this car has basically been upgraded from the aero to the wheels, tires, brakes, interior trim, and uh, all of the um, paintwork. Um, actually, anywhere you see color on the car is actually paint. So the stripes, the um, boomerangs, all of that's actually painted. Wow. Um, brakes on the car were uh, upgraded from the 3LT's uh, Z51 package to Alcon's um, Pro Sports. Uh, they developed those specifically for us. And then HRE did a fantastic job on basically reproducing the original style Halibrand wheels that we used in 1960 for the new car. Uh, so we have the, the Halibrand uh, five kidney bean design wheels with the, with the five pointed star uh, as they were back in 1960. And then Peter Stevens, the designer for the McLaren F1, he worked with us on the designing of all of the aero on the back of the car the ram air scoops, the shark fin, and basically the overall general styling of the vehicle and what it should look like. Absolutely so, beautiful. It came out really nice. It really yeah. did, and the white just makes it stand out. Everything contrasts really well, and it, it, gives, it, it gives it a really different look than any other Corvette, because even this, this Lingenfelter Corvette back here, mm -hmm. in red, beautiful car, but with the contrasting tones you get with the whites and all the trim and accents, it's just, it really stands out as something special. It really does pop. And then there's something actually rather interesting, a little factoid on this. The, this color combination you see here actually was originated by Cunningham back in 1950. American racing colors are a white body with blue frame rails. But in 1950, you couldn't see the frame rails because the bodies, like modern cars, covered the frame. So he had to figure out how do these show the race, the international racing colors for America. Like in Britain, their racing color was green. So you have British racing green. In Italy, you know, Italy it was red. Everyone thinks it's Ferrari red. So it's Italy's national color is red. Oh wow! And uh, for America, it was white and blue. So he just had to figure that out. So what he did was he took the the left frame rail color and the right frame rail color and moved it to the middle of the car as two stripes in 1951. That was the first time that anyone had ever basically used what we now call racing stripes. Yeah. But back in 1951, they called them uh, Le Mans International, or Le Mans Competition Stripes. Basically, you only really needed to use them when you were racing overseas. What's well, beautiful, I love how they, they kind of taper to a point as you get to the back, which is very non-traditional with racing stripes. And, and then the reinterpretation of the racing stripe from our standpoint, because they were always about six inches wide and went the entire length of the car. And with the Corvette and with the, the sharp lines on the car, we really didn't feel that straight lines were going to suit it. So we tried to figure out how we would, in, you know, interpret the lines according to the lines of the car for the for the stripes. And just by happenstance, if we follow the, the contours from the front of the very front of the car along the contour lines, it automatically comes to a dual vanishing point at the back on either side of the of the stingray on the yeah. rear deck. That is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Now, I I don't want to say I'm not a Corvette person. I think everybody in their heart and soul at some degree is a Corvette person, but I don't know a heck of a lot about the new Corvettes. I don't. I, I haven't been following them other than the fact that I think they're probably the most beautiful Corvette, well, besides some of the older, older Corvettes, but some of the most beautiful vehicles now produced. My question is, is when it comes to the engine performance, you said 600 horsepower 600 on this. Horsepower. So what would the naturally, or I don't want to say naturally aspirated, but what the would standard the stock vet. standard VET come with? Standard VET's about 495. Okay. And Lingenfelter worked with us to develop the engine. So it's basically, they didn't crack the block. They basically just got the engine to breathe better. 
It's a new, uh, new throttle body, 97 millimeter throttle body, new uh, intake manifold, all carbon fiber, which you can look inside and see that. New headers from Corsa that were developed for the vehicle. And going out to Corsa's Extreme Sport exhaust system. And those four items with tuning basically got it to 600 horsepower and uh, 580 for the torque. And that's keeping it naturally aspirated, All too. All naturally aspirated. So 97 horsepower per liter out of a push ride, which is amazing. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, to support this wing, which is, puts 1,200 pounds of downforce on the car, if it's in its maximum setting at 150 miles an hour, this entire deck lid has actually been replaced. This is actually a carbon fiber part that we okay. create in-house and to, with re reinforcements throughout to support the wing. And cool. so it's considerably lighter than the stock deck lid, but also substantially stronger. So that was another development that we did on this car. So there's quite a bit of this vehicle that uh, is different than the, than the stock car. So from the brakes on down to the carpets okay. uh, have been updated. And then if you can take a picture inside, you can see yeah. on the headrests that, the, that one of the six locations on the car that you have the anniversary markings is on the headrest, on the door sills, and then on the side glass. And the interior, I'm assuming, is all customized as well, correct? The color scheme is actually the GM uh, Twilight Blue and okay. Tension Blue. But when we do the, the GT2 seats, which come are, are our standard seat for this car, we have to reupholster the headrest so that it matches this headrest. So, because normally it would have the brighter blue, the, the tension blue, okay. on the headrest on the GT2 seat. This is this particular car has the comp seats okay. in it, which is the, the, the upgrade. All right, so you all obviously have a tremendous amount of experience working with Corvettes. Oh, absolutely. Going back to 1960, when we took them to Le Mans for the first time. What is your take on the new, new body style Corvette? Well, the body style is really amazing. Of course, it has a, it's much more European now than, than the Corvette's ever been. But dynamically, this car is incredible. And I have to give kudos to the, to the design team at General Motors. They did a fantastic job at building out this car. The basic bones of the new Corvette are world class, without a doubt. Yeah, and it, for the first time, you can say that without having, you know, mm -hmm. in, in all honesty, say, yeah, the Corvette is actually on par with anything you can pretty much find around the world. And what we tried to do with this vehicle was to build a vehicle that Briggs Cunningham would, would want the family to put their name on. Mm -hmm. And so we really tried to bring it up to the spec that would, on, a, on a world stage, this car can, is a match to any, any McLaren that it might run across on the road, essentially. Yep. And what's so, really special about this as well is the fact that the Corvette has always been kind of that attainable supercar, exactly. right? It's, it's the vehicle that that you could buy, even if you buy a completely bone stock base model Corvette, you're spending around $60,000. Oh, which, absolutely. Yeah, in today's market, that's almost unheard of for anything where pickup trucks are going for over $100,000. Yeah, it's, you know? it's true. Yep, it's really so it's, true. it's pretty cool the fact that you can take something and transform it into something so special and so unique while at the same time, and I, I, I hate to ask the question, but can you talk about price a little bit? Like, what would this cost on a dealership lot from an MSRP perspective? Let's cut, cut to the chase. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, this vehicle, as you see it here, is 170,000. Okay. And then, um, with the uh, we only have four options on the car. Uh, you have an optional carbon fiber front deck lid, which uh, is th you know can be added to the car, and you have carbon fiber wheels that are also an option for the vehicle. That are they're still the Halibrand style, but with the al aluminum. Uh, center with the Hellebrand uh, five kidney bean design and a, mm -hmm. and a carbon fiber barrel. And those are incredibly light, 19.6 pounds oh, wow. on the front and just uh, 23.4 uh, pounds for the rear wheels. And as it is, even with our standard wheel, we take 22 pounds off the rear of the car as, oh, wow. it, as it sits, with the carbon wheel substantially more. And um, then you have the option, of course, of the, G of the comp seat versus the GT2 seat. And the only other options, we have four different wheel colors that are available for the car. So there, you can pick the, the silver satin, which is standard. We have a magnesium for the representative of the original magnesium wheels that were on the, on the 1960 cars. We have an ash, which is also representative of the 1960 cars because the magnesium brake wheels, mm -hmm. after the race, all the brake dust would get into them. And it were, of course, magnesium being porous, you couldn't clean that brake dust off. 
So at the end of the race, the wheels almost look charcoal. I was about to actually yeah. say, it was the charcoal color to emulate brake dust exactly. on the wheel. That's cool. Exactly. That's cool. So what about white? Is that an option as well? For the wheels, no. So okay. we have silver, uh, we have silver, magnesium, ash, and then uh, uh, champagne, which is a, a bright bronze color. Okay. So, so and a, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you mentioned that these are actually going to be sold through an actual Chevrolet dealership, correct? Yeah. yeah they're... It, the reservations are made through Cunningham, and then Maddox Chevrolet right here in Redford, Michigan, handles the actual delivery on the car. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong again, mm -hmm. but because it's being sold through a Chevrolet dealership, is everything covered under your factory yes. warranty? Yes, um, everything but the engine is covered by Lingenfelter for three years, 36,000 with an extension, okay. extension available. Brakes are also covered by Alcon and for their three-year warranty. Everything else on the car is still under the original GM warranty. Okay, and that's really important because if you take almost any OEM vehicle and you start modifying and doing changes, the things that you modify technically void the warranty of the things that you removed or replaced. That's right. That's and right. when you when you get it through a dealership, you still get a lot of the warranty, of course, in place. But you know, engine modifications, brakes, things like that to still be covered through the manufacturer is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And that's really the story behind a lot of the, the, the supercars, or not so much supercars. I classify the Corvette as a supercar. Absolutely. And a lot of people say it's the poor man's supercar, but the reality of it is it's a supercar any way you cut it. You know, mid-engine vehicle absolutely has the profile, the look. I think most people, when they first started seeing these Corvettes appear in their city streets, they absolutely had to take a double look and see if it was you know, a Ferrari or see if it was some other vehicle. They, well, because they yeah. probably didn't recognize it as, you know, as a Corvette when they first saw it. No, absolutely. So. And, you know, again, to be able to get a vehicle, and that's the story, you could buy, I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and say this, you could buy a $30,000 vehicle, put a hundred grand into it and make that thing a rocket, super fast, super crazy, super, uh, uh, you know, super able to do whatever you want it to do, but you won't have a warranty. That's and right. you won't have really any true baked in reliability because it was all put together aftermarket. And when you do that to vehicles, you oftentimes, you, you change the engineering of the vehicle, right? But what you guys do are actually taking a very well-engineered vehicle, you're having it modified by very reputable companies with reputable parts, including your own brand. Exactly and where we want to link yeah, Yep, and you get the legitimacy of buying it through or getting it from an actual Chevy dealership. Mm -hmm. So you still maintain the integrity of the brand. You maintain the integrity of the service and all of that. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely cool. Exactly. Tony, is there anything else you'd like to add? Any plug? Do you have a website? Well, yes. Uh, CunninghamAutomotive.com is our website. And uh, one thing I did want to mention, I, did, I don't think I mentioned during this, the stripes and everything you see on color on the car is paint. So there's no vinyl on this car anywhere. You did mention that. And what I was actually going to say when you mentioned that, but I didn't want to interrupt you, is the fact that a lot of folks that buy cars like this and put stripes on them, mm -hmm. just take them to their local vinyl shop. That's right. And they put a vinyl stripe across the top of it. And painted stripes, that's kind of a lost art. It, it really is because vinyl has gotten so good mm -hmm. that oftentimes you can put it on and you really can't tell much of a difference. That's true. But, but but the, the you know, it's partly due to the cost of doing painted stripes. Yeah, absolutely. And there used to be that art form of people that would actually take their fine brush and they'd go do through pen, it. Do pen striping as yep, well. Yep, you're right. And so, when you look at something like this, this takes you back to that quality era. And it's all about quality at this point. It's about the fact that if you're going to pay $170,000 for a vehicle, possibly more, mm -hmm. You, you want to know that the quality, time, attention, and detail was put into it to paint the stripes on, That's not right. just to have some vinyl guy come by and squeegee some, uh, some 3M adhesive on it, right? Exactly. exactly. No, absolutely. Exactly. Tony, I truly appreciate it. This is an absolutely fun. beautiful car. It's one of the few cars out here, and I hate to say that because there's a lot of beautiful cars out here, but it's one of the few that absolutely stands out. And just the folks that walk by this booth taking pictures of this, you, you can see why, because it looks so different. And that white, that vibrancy of it is absolutely gorgeous. That's why, that's why right now you're being interviewed by a truck and RV channel and we're featuring a Corvette. But you know what? This guy lives in Texas. That's right. He's a Texan. He knows what real brisket's like. <laughs> Absolutely. That's some of that weird stuff Absolutely. that I had downtown here Absolutely. in Detroit. And when yeah. you come, when you're in the Dallas area, make sure you go up to. I'm going to. I'm going to give a plug for Hard Eight, my favorite, my favorite barbecue place. So. Absolutely. Hey, no problem at all. <laughs> all right. Anyways, again, Tony, thank you for your time. Right. Really appreciate it. Beautiful car. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Yep, guys. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.